fiery horse with a speed of light, a clot of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. Hey! The night train out of Kingsburg was headed up a long, steep grade that led into the mountains from Grass Valley. As it lost speed, a man in handcuffs peered from a window in the rear coach. There were just two men in the car. One was Jack Dirk, an outlaw, whose train robberies, gun battles, and escapes had made him an almost legendary figure in the brief space of two years. Beside him sat Sheriff Ben Shaw of Kingsburg. Watching his prisoner, the veteran lawman smiled grimly. What are you looking for, Jack? You'd never guess, Sheriff. If you're expecting your gang to hold up the train and take you off, you might just as well forget it. Is that so? Your partners don't know you're here. I let everybody think I wasn't taking you to the pen until next week. Oh, you're slick, Sheriff. <laughs> Us old lawmen know a trick or two. Say, what are you doing? Rolling a cigarette. These cuffs kind of cramp my style. Well, you'll be wearing them till the warden takes them off. The warden? <laughs> yeah. I mailed him the keys before we started out. So it won't do you no good to jump me, even to get a chance. Are you that scared of me? Uh, I'm just being careful. Watch out, Sheriff. Here, you sit down. I dropped my cigarette. It's burned the seat. I don't see it. Now look under your coattail. Yep, there it is. Yeah, here's something else. Ow! The sheriff slumped unconscious in his seat with a cut on the side of his head where the blow from the handcuffs had fallen. Dirk bent over and grabbed the lawman's gun. <laughs> Chuckling with satisfaction, the outlaw moved to the rear door of the car. Then leaped from the slowly moving train, rolled in the brush that grew along the right of way, then disappeared into the woods. The next morning, Dan Reed, the nephew of the Lone Ranger, trotted his horse from the masked man's camp in the foothills down into Grass Valley. Ahead of him stood a dilapidated blacksmith shop. Dan knew from previous visits that it was owned by a surly giant named Lige Parker, but frequently had no other keeper than a boy apprentice. At the open door, he pulled rein. Oh, ho, oh, Victor. Ho, oh, easy boy. Hello there, Billy. Oh, howdy, Dan. Why don't you lie? Uh, I'm going to. Steady, boy. There's a sack of food for you. Oh, gee, Dan, that's good of you. Old Lige didn't leave me much to eat, and he went down to Kingsburg for a tear. Oh, is he still gone? Yeah, and I hope he stays. 
He's always broke and mean when he comes back. That's when he lays a tug strap on me. How did it happen that you were apprenticed to Parker? Well, he's the only one who wanted me after the plague hit the valley and all my folks died. So the law gave me to him, like I was a stray dog. Well, at least you're learning a trade. Who wants to be a blacksmith all their lives? Not me. But what are you aiming to do, Billy? I'm going to ride with Jack Dirk someday. You wait and see if I don't. Well, that outlaw's riding days are over. He's going to prison for life. He'll get away. The law dogs can't hold him. You're always talking about Dirk. You worship the ground he walks on, don't you? Suppose I do. Billy, no criminal deserves that kind of faith. People tell stories that make Dirk seem like another Robin Hood, but they're not true. He'd kill his best friend if he stood to gain by it. Oh, I don't believe it. Well, let's not quarrel. I only want to keep you out of trouble. I want to do the same for you, Dan. You better take this food back. What for? The fellow you're camping with will raise Ned when he misses this stuff. He'll pound you plenty out there. Oh, 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 no, he won't, Billy. Well, you don't know him any better than you do Jack Dirk. But I hope you will. A steady boy. Are hey. oh, you leaving? Yes, I'm going back. But I'll see you again. So long. So long. Get up, Victor. On his return to camp, Dan told the Lone Ranger of Billy's hard life and unwholesome interest in Jack Dirk. The masked man listened silently until he concluded, then said, Yes, you're right, Dan. That boy's misguided hero worship may lead him into crime. I believe he'd forget, Dirk, if we could get him away from that shop. I'll write to some of my friends who are in a position to give him a home and education. Oh, golly, that's great. But I thought you planned to break camp tomorrow. Those were my intentions. Until Tonto learned through an Indian sheep herder that there are some strange riders in the hills. You think they're Dirk's men? It's possible. Dirk may have been on his way to meet them when he was arrested. Where is Tonto? I sent him to Kingsburg to warn the sheriff. Oh, he's coming back now. You've been riding hard, Tonto. What happened? Well, Jack Dirk, him loose again. Did his gang free him? No. Sheriff sneak him on train last night, and him knock out Sheriff, then jump off. What's being done to recapture him? Railroad people, plenty man. Them offer big reward for Dirk and Pellers and gang. The valley must be alive with lawmen. Everybody look long railroad track. Here, Silver. Please steady, big fella. Stay close to camp, Dan. Yes, sir. And where we go? We'll try to keep Dirk from reaching the hills. Come on, Silver. Get him up, scout. In the meantime, Billy had turned back into the blacksmith's shop with Dan's gift. As he hungrily opened the sack, he heard the rusty hinges on the back door creak. Who's there? Well, say something. Help me, Billy. What? You're Jack Dirk. Sure, partner. What happened? How'd you get here? Give me some water. There's some in this bucket. Here, I'll hold it for you. I made a break, Billy. Hurt my leg. A tough time getting here with these handcuffs. Oh, gee whiz, Jack. I'm glad you made it. Can you get me out of this hardware? Hey, just let me get a cold chisel and a punch and a hammer. I'll have those things off in no time. Yeah, hurry. I was out back listening to what you told that kid. You're all right. Yeah, I'll get these right away. Easy, kid. I'll be careful. Is there a horse around here? None within miles I know about. I wanted to get that Dan's horse, but I haven't got a gun. I took the sheriff's, but I lost it when I jumped off the train. I told Dan you'd get away. There'll be a posse here any time. I better hide these cuffs when I get them off. Yeah, yeah. You've got to do something else for me. Anything you want, Jack. Anything. My gang's hiding out in the cave in Elbow Canyon. But I can't make it that far with a game leg. I heard it when I jumped off the train. I reckon you want me to tell your fellas to come after you. Yeah, that's it. Now listen careful. You can go to the turn of the canyon. Billy broke the handcuffs and freed the outlaw, then went for his pals in Elbow Canyon. By mid-afternoon, Dirk had been moved by his gang, and Billy was back in the blacksmith shop. Proud of the part he had played in the escape of his criminal hero, the boy stood at the door watching the dust raised by posse men who rode helter-skelter, covering the very tracks they wanted to find, and sometimes chasing one another. He grinned to himself as one party turned toward the shop. Then he recognized the leader. 
It's Lige Parker. Oh, 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 oh. Here you are, Mr. Foreman. Put you some water in the shop. Oh, sure, Lige. Well, let's you like to stretch your legs. Right. Well, fellas. Oh, easy there. I figured Dirk got rid of his arms. He would have him now. Looks that way, Lige. Must have knocked him off with stones. You're talking to a blacksmith now. Nobody who's wearing handcuffs could bust loose by using rocks. You'd need good tools and help. Maybe he used your tools, like. <laughs> Man, well, I thought you could be right. He knows this place. The one inside. I'm bringing the bucket. Yeah, stay right there and tell me what you've been doing since last night. What would I be doing in this rat hole? Knocking the irons off Jack Dirk, maybe. What do you mean? Don't play innocent. You're hiding something I can tell. Then take a look. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Hey, what? <coughs> How'd you chip the edge off my best cold chisel? I didn't know it was chipped. You cut something on that piece of iron there on the floor. <laughs> something else. A piece of handcuff link. Grab him. Oh, no, you don't. I hit him off. He's outside now. I got him. Let's go. Turn him around so I can use my quid. Right, come on, you. Let's go, man. Oh, you ornery maverick. Where's Dirk hiding? I'll never tell. We'll see. Who's that coming? A masked man and an Indian. Stop that quarry. Who are you, fella? Oh. Oh. Well, I'll ask the question. What have you got against this boy? He helped Dirk get away, and we're trying to make him talk. What about it, Billy? You know my name. Yes, I know more than that. Did you help Dirk get away? Sure. I even know where he is, but nobody's getting it out of me. Otto. Take him on your horse. He's my prisoner. He wants the law. That may be. But we'll deliver him to the sheriff ourselves. All right, let's go. Get him up. Come on, through there. That night, Jack Dirk and his second in command, Lash Thomas, sat on a pile of blankets in their cavern hideout. Other members of the gang squatted around a lantern playing cards. As the outlaw leader nursed his injured leg, Lash said, Jack, you sure owe that Billy boy a lot. I don't owe anybody anything. Hey, the law would have you right now if you... Hey, somebody's coming. Yeah, that's Mike. He's been watching the canyon. There's somebody with him. Maybe the kid. It's Mike, fellas. Bring an Andy Frank then. Hey, how'd the law shark find this guy? I told him about it during my trial. Uh... He was to tip you boys off before they started me for the pen. But the sheriff was too slick. Hello, Jack. Hello, boys. Right, Andy, you fool. Why'd you come here now? Don't worry, Jack. I wasn't followed, and I didn't leave any tracks. You mean you used the trail I told you about? <laughs> of course, of course. I took the cattle trail to the river, then rode through the water till I got here. What's been happening? Plenty. They've caught the boy who helped you escape. You sure? I don't know the boy. Didn't see him brought in. But as a lawyer, I have sources of information around the jail. As I got it, a mask man showed up with the kid just after dark. A mask man? I can't figure that. Must be a friend of the sheriff. Because Shaw fixed up some kind of bond and right away released the kid to him. Where'd the mask hombre take him? To a camp, I suppose. Andy, you've got to find that Sprout Prado. Why, Jack? He's apt to tell where we are. Me and the boys can't go hunting for him when the whole country's swarming with posses. Well, I'll do what I can. But I expect to be paid for my services. You'll get paid. Now, listen... You can't locate the kid any other way. Keep an eye on Parker's blacksmith shop. He might show up there. What'll I do if I find him? Fix him so he'll never talk. No. No, I couldn't do that. I'm no killer. Then bring him here. I'll do the rest. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Fearing betrayal by Billy, the blacksmith's apprentice, who had helped him escape to his gang's hideout, Jack Dirk plotted to kill the boy. Meanwhile, the Lone Ranger and Tonto had Billy in charge and were riding back to camp. You broke the law, Billy, but I don't want it to break you. You're going to have a chance to change your mind about Dirk before you answer in court for helping him. If you think you can talk me into squealing on him, you're loco. Dirk doesn't know you won't talk. He'll kill you if he gets a chance. Not after what I've done for him. A criminal thinks only of his own safety. This supposed hero you worship is only a dream. Well, here I'll camp. And now, Billy, you'll get big surprise. Oh, sir, oh, 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 Look here, Dan. Well, if it isn't Billy. Gosh, Dan, what do they got you here for? <laughs> <laughs> Dan is my friend, Billy. He and you are going to have a lot of fun together. Well, I'll be jiggered. I'm putting you on your word of honor that you won't try to run away. All right, mister. It's a promise. I'll stick with Dan. For several weeks, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Dan worked carefully to free Billy from his illusions of criminal glory. Wholesome food, kind treatment, and new interests softened the defenses he had built against the wretchedness of his former life. The masked man became his new hero, and he no longer talked of Dirk, though he still stubbornly kept the secret of the outlaw's hiding place. Then the Lone Ranger noticed that the boy was limping and questioned him. Billy, what's the matter with your foot? It's nothing, mister. Well, his boots wore out, sir, and I gave him my extra pair, but they don't fit. You should have told me before. Tonto's in town now. He could have bought a pair. Oh, no, you've done enough for me. I got some good boots at the blacksmith shop. If you'd let me go no, after... No, no, Billy. You need constant protection, and it wouldn't be safe for me to take you there. I reckon Lodge Parker would get mighty ornery if he saw us again. We don't want to antagonize him any further. See, he'll be a witness against you at your hearing. Let me go, sir. Parker hasn't anything against me. Well, all right, Dan, but be careful. I will. Here, Vector. Here's the blacksmith shop, Victor. Oh, oh, steady, boy. <clears throat> Door's open, but doesn't look like anyone's around. Mr. Parker! He must be away. Oh, I guess it'll be all right to pick up Billy's boots anyhow. Here they are, just inside the shop. Somebody's coming. It isn't Parker. Oh, who oh, oh, oh. Come out of that shop, kid. You're covered. But, uh, let me explain. Get up and get on your horse. We're going to see Jack Dirk. Here's where we leave the river, kid. Up the bank. Come on, Vicky boy. Come on. Up. Hey, Mike. Hi, right, Andy. Hide right, right in the cave. Well, here we are, kid. Pull up in line. Hold, 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 hold. hold. Steady, Easy. I'll take care of the horses. Say, who's this sprout? Well, well I thought you knew him. All right. Jack. Well, it's everybody. Come here. What's the matter? Matter, you fool. You've got the wrong kid. Now, look, Mike. I found him at the shop. Hey, what is this? Hey, that boy. I saw him at Lige Parker's the day I got young Billy Brown to cut off those cuffs. The two are chums. He was picking up a pair of the kid's boots when I got him. He claimed to be taking them away for a friend. He did, eh? And he knows where Billy is. What about it, Button? I'm not saying anything. Oh, you aren't. Well, we'll see about that. Several hours later, Tonto returned from town to find the Lone Ranger mounted and ready to ride. As Billy stood by with hanging head, the masked man greeted the Indian with an anxious question. Tonto, have you seen Dan? I'm well, going to ask you the same question. How did you learn he's away? Well, on way back, me past blacksmith shop. Me see fresh tracks down horse neck nearby. That's where he planned to go. Tracks show him come there alone. When him leaves, somebody right away with him. Did you follow their trail? Ah. Uh, Hoofprints lead to river, a little way from shop, and not come out on another side. You know what that means? Me think some fella capture Dan and make him ride in river to cover trail. That's the Elbow River. It runs from the far end of the valley to the mountains. Even if we knew which way they'd turn, it would take days to scout the banks. 
Why you think Feller take Dan prisoner? There's only one explanation. Dan was mistaken for Billy. He's in the outlaw's hands. Jack Dirk never let him go alive. But it's all my fault. I... <laughs> yes, Billy? I can't let anything happen to Dan. I'll tell on Dirk. Hello. Help him onto your horse. He can tell us as we ride. Uh, here, you get up there. Get him up to town. Come on, Mister, the cave's just this side of those rapids, you see. Look, Kimasabi. Rocks from old land like slide. Uh, we'll pull up behind them. Close over. Oh, Easy. 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 Billy, how many men are in the gang? Six. And they got a lot of stuff stashed away. Food, water, bullets, everything. It looked like them fellers got big advantage. We need plenty help. Manpower alone won't beat them or save Dan. Protected by that cave, they can stand off a regiment for days. And what we do? Scout around first. What do you want me to do, mister? Stay here with the horses, Billy. Come on, fellow. Ah. As the masked man and Indian worked their way forward through the scant coverage afforded by a few bushes, Dan stood with his back against the wall of the cave, still being questioned and threatened. Dirk and the crooked lawyer faced him. The gang leader, who held a level six gun, was saying, Kid, we know you're hooked up somehow with that masked man and the boy from the blacksmith shop. I'm giving you just one more chance to tell where they are. What the? Hey, hey, what's wrong out there? It's the masked man. I just saw him in the cannon. Briggs, you watch the kid. Right. Rest of you, come on. Saddle our horses, somebody. Keep down, Jack. Mike, where'd you see that masked man? Him and an Indian was down there in the brush. Now they're shooting from behind that old landslide. There's only two of them. Maybe we can get out of here. Yeah, not with them fellas shooting like that. They only ride out of this hole one at a time and they pick us all off. Jack, that young Billy must have told on us. Wait till I get hold of him. Hey, we got a kid now. Maybe we could use him for a shield. He'll only shield one man. I've got a hunch he's plenty close to the mask, hombre. If he is, we might make a deal. That's an idea. What are you tying that handkerchief on your rifle for, Dirk? I'm going to signal for a talk. Hold your fire, Toto. They've raised a white flag. Well, that looked like trick. What's the meaning of that signal? I want to talk to you. Come on out. I'll meet you halfway. You take big chance, Kimasabi. Our chance to catch them off guard. What do you mean? Dirk's men will cover me while we talk. They've seen you and will expect you to cover him. Oh, that right. But need not savvy how it helped. You bully your rifle, headband, and feather. While he shows just enough of himself to make them think you're still here, I want you to climb the canyon wall and get above them. Ah, uh, this old landslide, good place to climb. Me keep on this side till me get plenty far up. The outlaws will be too intent on watching me to notice you. When I signal, open fire. Ah, uh, you take things, Billy. All right. Uh, there. Let me go now. Show yourself, masked man. All right, I'm coming out. Watch him, fellas. His partner is holding a rifle on me. I suppose you're Jack Dirk. Yeah, that's me. I want to talk about that kid we're holding. Go on. You'll never see him alive again unless you pull out and let us get away. You can't escape, even if we let you leave the cave. Hundreds of lawmen are still hunting you. We'll think about the posses. You think about the kid. I have no assurance that he's still alive. We'll show him to you before we ride out. <laughs> we'll even leave a law shark with him for you to capture. What do you mean? Playing for time, the masked man continued his talk with a boastful train robber until a swift upward glance told him that Toto had gained a position directly over the mouth of the cave. Then he closed the parley. Go back to your gang. You'll know my decision shortly. You'd better say yes right now. With a leap, Dirk rejoined the outlaws who crouched behind rocks just outside the cave. At the same instant, the lone ranger who had stood his ground motioned to Tonto and threw himself into a clump of bushes, his six guns hammering an accompaniment to the fire which the Indian poured down into the outlaws' defenses. Taken by surprise and cut off from retreat into the cave, the bandits attempted a sortie, only to be driven back as the lone ranger closed in. Drop your gun! You can't speak him up! Get their guns, Toto. 
Stand where are you? Right here. I'm all right, sir. I was protecting the boy, mister. I'll testify in court against these crooks. I'll tell all about them. Do you're talking in court. You'll never take me in. He must have him got knife. Yeah, for you. No, you don't. No, oh, my wrist. Here's one for your stomach. Oh. One for the chin. Oh. Ah, you get him. You lifted him right off his feet. Come on, jerk, on your feet. I just started on you. Here, I'll help you out. No, 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 wait a minute. For what? Oh, oh my like a law. Hit him like a sledgehammer. Tell him, mister, I got here just in time to see you finish, Dirk. That last blow was a beauty. Someone throw water on him. I bet you could lick a hundred pole cats like him. Look, big posse come hey. up river. Plenty men come here to take charge of crooks. Sheriff's men. Then get here just in time. The sheriff. Good enough. Billy, I'll have just time to say a few words to you before the sheriff comes. Yes, sir. You've seen your hero's downfall. Oh, he wasn't so much of a hero. Golly, mister, what... When I saw him, after knowing you, well, I, I never knew anyone like you. You've been deprived of the chance to know your father and the men like him who fought when the odds were against them. The men you knew were bullies and braggarts. They could talk and act big when they were backed up by a gang. Because they got away with crime for a little while, they thought they were bigger than the law. They, they weren't. No, and they never will be. Now, here's the sheriff. He's our kind of man, Billy. He's your kind of man. Hello, Sheriff. Well, my man, we heard that shooting. Well, I'll be doggone if you haven't got Dirk and his whole gang. Billy gets credit for the capture. You can drop your charge against him now. I'll be right glad to do it. He'll get a heap of reward money. I leave it to you to see that it's well spent. I want him to have a good home and education. He'll get it, mister. Good for you, Billy. I knew you had the right stuff in you. So long now. So long, Dan. Adios. Adios. Come on, Mick. Come on, Come on, Billy. Yeah. You know that masked man. Who is he? Son, you've been a partner of the Lone Ranger. A partner of the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. <laughs> <laughs>